Hey guys, welcome back to another oil filter cutup video. Today I've got a SuperTech ST9688 filter for you. This is Walmart's house brand, if you're not familiar with SuperTech. And this video is a re-release of one I came out with about two weeks ago. And I just was not happy with the way it came out. So I'm redoing it. Hopefully it'll be a little shorter this time around because I've kind of seen things before, but I'm not going to make any promises there. Anyway, um, what is special about SuperTech filters? Well... I want to say the price is, okay? Usually the budget filters from your local auto parts store come in around four to five bucks. This thing comes in at just under three at $2.97, which is awesome, but you just can't help but ask the question, all right, well, what's the catch, okay? How does Walmart make something so cheaply? Is it because they cut corners? Is it because they just had engineers that figured out some, you know, really cheap way to manufacture the thing that no one else has come up with yet? Or is it because Walmart operates on razor-thin margins and that's just how they do everything? I think the answer, after looking at the filter and all its components, I think the answer is a combination of all three of those things. And I'm going to show you why I think that as I go through all the different components and everything like that. So... To get started, I want to talk about the packaging, okay? This filter just comes in a standard cardboard box. It does not come in a bag like AMS, like the AMS oils do. It does not have the plastic shrink wrap over the bottom. It's just the filter in the box, okay? That's just one means of cost control right there. As far as the filter itself goes, starting with the case, cases usually come in two different thicknesses. Uh, this wall here will either measure 20 thousandths of an inch thick or 15 thousandths of an inch. I've seen one or the other, but really nothing beyond that. So this guy is the thinner of the two. It's 15 thousandths of an inch, which probably just means that the burst pressure rating is lower for this thing. I don't know what it is because I haven't found any published numbers from SuperTech in that regard, but um, it also is probably more apt to dent if you strike it with a rock or drop it or something, but... Um, I've seen both. Usually the more expensive filters all have the thicker 20 thou case, Purolator, Bosch, Mobile One, AMS Oil. I think K&N did too. But um, the early, well, I did a video on Fram from maybe two or three years ago now. And that's this guy here. This is this this part number is from a slightly different application than, than this filter here. But I remember the case on this extra guard had a 15,000 thickness to it. So that is another compromise that you'll be um, making to, you know, when you when you buy at this price point from Walmart, okay? Uh, the whole thing comes in at about 226 grams, which is a little bit on the lighter end for this particular vehicle application. But as many of you have pointed out in the comments on prior videos I've done, Weight does not necessarily correlate to quality or performance, and I get that. That is true. But it's just one other data point to look at when you're trying to compare this guy to its peers. So that is that. Underneath, here is the tapping plate and gasket and all that. And here's the one that I had already cut so you can get a better look at it. But there's a few things I want to talk about here. The first of which is the gasket, okay? This gasket just makes sure there's a seal between the filter and your engine. But a big concern I have with it is that it comes off very easily, okay? It's not really captured all that well. And why is that a concern if it's just going to be sandwiched between the filter and the engine? Well, there's a risk when you go to remove your filter later on to change it. If the gasket stays stuck to your engine and you don't realize it and you put a new filter on over top of it, it'll get wadded up and leak and cause really big problems. Now, I know professional shops and things know to check that every time, but not everybody <laughs> knows that, okay? And I would rather see a design slash engineering control just make it a non-issue rather than rely on every person to get it right every time, okay? So that's something I would improve the next time around when Walmart goes to update the design on this thing. And speaking of that, 
I came across a review of this exact model number from somebody about a year ago where the internals and some of the design elements were different. So this design has been evolving and recently, and it may not stay this way either. So this is mid 2019. This is this here is what you get right now at this price. So just keep in mind, things may change, hopefully for the better, because I've kind of observed since looking at this original Fram Extra Guard that designs have been getting a lot better. So glad to see that. So that's my big complaint about just how well this gasket is captured. But as far as the gasket itself goes, it's very thick, as you can see. And just based on how stiff it feels and the look and feel of it and experience, I'm going to go ahead and guess with 90% confidence that this is made from nitrile rubber rather than the silicone that is more prevalent on more expensive filters, okay? Nitrile rubber is more economical, but it does not perform as well as silicone does at extreme temperature ranges. So that's just another compromise you'll have to make to hit this price point. And I think that's kind of why Walmart chose to go with that over silicone. I think that is probably true for the anti-drain back valve as well on the inside. You can kind of see it through these little inlet holes here. Here's the anti-drain back valve. I want to say that this is probably the same nitrile rubber as well, okay? Moving towards the center, here are the oil inlet holes where the oil from your engine flows into the filter, okay? There's 13 of these little semi-slotted holes. And when I released my first video, I was way off on my measurement for how much total inlet area there is here. The total inlet area for these 13 holes is approximately 0.33 square inches. And for comparison's sake, this is the tapping plate from a Mobile One that fits the same vehicle. And there's these five round holes here. These five holes total up to about 0.27 square inches. So from a flow, from a flow standpoint, you've actually got a larger combined opening area with the SuperTech part, which is cool. Lastly, the center hole here is an M20 by 1.5 thread, and that is just a function of what vehicle it applies to because it's got to be threaded right to fit. But I do want to point out that on all the filters I've looked at that fit this same application, most, if not all of them, have had this little Y stamped on the bottom of the tapping plate, and I've kind of always wondered why that is. After doing a little more research into that, I think that is a thread code to tell you it, if this is a metric thread or not and some details on that. So during assembly or manufacturing, it's just an easy way to keep, keep these tapping plates straight. So if you're curious, I think that's what that is. That's everything I've got for the outside of the part. So let's take a look at the inside of the filter, starting with the cartridge. Now here is the whole assembly you get when you cut a filter open, okay? On the bottom, you have the anti-drain back valve, then you have the actual filter cartridge, then you have the leaf spring and pressure relief valve sitting on top. So if you pull off those parts there, you're left with just the filter cartridge. And on the inside, you've got a center tube. Usually these center tubes are made out of metal, like this one is here from Mobile One, okay? This has got a helical seam on it with these little louver style openings in it, and that is not at all what we see from the SuperTech. This is what you get with the Walmart part. It is a plastic injection molded little cage. From a strength standpoint, I can't really say how it stacks up against the metal, more traditional style center tube, but I will say that these openings here are huge compared to the little holes or louvers you get from everybody else. So from a flow standpoint, that's definitely good. Now, if strength is a concern to you, and I can't really say what kind of loading these guys experience, but if strength was really a concern or failure point, I think Walmart would have figured it out in their testing and just even after they released it, based on how many of these things they sell, I think that I want to, I'm going to go ahead and guess they did their homework to make sure that this thing was up to snuff. So, but that's the first time I've ever seen that. That's pretty cool. 
As far as the end caps go, these are both metal end caps. All right. Well, most filters are, or nearly all filters are. So why is that special? Well, I only bring that up because this is the cartridge from a Fram Extra Guard from a couple years ago. I don't know if Fram is still designing their filters this way. I hope not. I've been meaning to do another update video on them, but you can see that these things are just made from cardboard and they're not even concentric. It just looks crummy in comparison, right? So, and this thing at the time, I think was a little more than three bucks a few years ago. And now that a few years have gone by, you get metal end caps for even less money. So I'm glad to see from a industry competition standpoint, you're getting more for your money. So that's pretty cool. The end caps are identical too. Now, aside from these cardboard ones, I don't think I've come across another filter that has identical metal end caps. Why does that matter, right? Well, I think it matters from a manufacturing cost standpoint, because if you need two of the same part, you can make one machine that makes one style and just cranks them out. You don't have to keep track of two different designs or part numbers in the system. And when you assemble this guy, you don't have to keep track of which side of the canister is up and down, okay? You know, one end just mates up against the leaf spring relief valve assembly, and the other just mates up to the anti-drain back valve, and it's all nice and neat like that. So that's, that's pretty cool. I think that probably had a pretty favorable impact on manufacturing costs for SuperTech. So I think that aside from some of the compromises that SuperTech made in maybe some materials and things like that, this is just them maybe being clever. So I'm kind of impressed by that, actually. Moving on to the filter media itself. Okay, this is made from a synthetic blend that is, according to the box, 99% efficient at 30 microns. And I'm assuming that's per the industry standard ISO 45-48-12 test. And just for a benchmark comparison, this is the Mobile One filter. They advertise 99% plus efficiency at 30 micron particle sizes as well per the ISO test. 99% plus, I don't know how close to 100 they actually get, but it's pretty comparable, okay? Not all filters are marketed with their percentages measuring 30 micron particles. Some of them measure particles that are 25 microns or 20 microns. So 99% efficient at 20 microns is a, a lot finer of a filtration than 99% at 30 microns is. So it's not always apples to apples. Make sure you know the size of the particle when you're trying to compare your efficiency ratings. But that's pretty good for, again, three bucks. And I think that's how... Um, oh, before I move on, some of you have asked me what the total filter area is when I review these guys, so I will tell you what that is. So when I cut the other, the earlier canister apart and stretched out the media, and this is just a cut from the end, the total length was 56 inches. And if you multiply that by the exposed area of the filter media, which was 1.825 inches, you get a total filter area of approximately 102.2 square inches, for those of you who really want to know. But the efficiency numbers lend itself to this 10,000 mile protection, I guess, guarantee. Usually when you see <laughs> a mileage guarantee on the side of the box, and I think uh, Mobile One, yeah, they've got a 20,000 mile protection thing here, but they've got this little asterisk that leads you to, oh, I forget where it was. Oh, some, some fine print that says, okay, well, it protects up to a year or that mileage, whichever comes first. And I think also usually manufacturers require that you use their house brand synthetic oil in order to, you know, make that kind of a guarantee. I haven't found any such fine print with the SuperTech part. Not on the box, not on the website. Maybe it's just that straightforward, but I would really hope that if you 
go to make a warranty claim, you don't find out you don't find out you're disqualified because of some little caveat like that that you weren't aware of. So if any of you out there find anything in that regard, let me know. I will take the little blurb I found on Walmart's website and put it in the video notes. And all it says of relevance to this discussion is that they say that manufacturer's warranties remain in effect when SuperTech filters are used, which is which is great. That's cool, but uh, there's really no more detail beyond that. I will say, though, that if that's really true, I bet Walmart had to go through a lot of effort to provide data and convince manufacturers to uphold their warranties when these filters are used, which might be an indicator as to how well tested they've been, okay? Which is why I'm not too worried about this little cage here because <laughs> if it's good enough for manufacturers who have skin in the game monetarily, it's probably not something you need to worry about. Uh, moving on to the last couple things here. This, again, is the leaf spring and pressure relief valve assembly. The leaf spring, all it does is keep the whole stack up kind of compressed inside of the case just to make sure there's no leaking past the anti-drain back valve seal through the center or anything like that. This design shares a lot of elements with this one here, which was also from this Fram that I looked at a couple years ago. I don't know which came first. Maybe Walmart had the design first, but I think that was yet again another cost control measure. It was to use common parts. I think this poppet and coil spring are identical and the while the leaf springs aren't exactly identical they're very similar so probably came out of the same design house i don't know who manufactures these things it could be champion labs or somebody like that maybe maybe that's just a standard that a third party manufacturer like that offers and they didn't have to go through paying for new design and tooling and testing and everything like that so there's not much really to talk about there Overall, again, just to recap, I think for $3, you get an awful lot of filter, especially compared to what that would buy you a couple of years ago. And to review the cost control measures, there there were a few compromises just on the gasket and anti-drain back valve material, also on the thickness of the case. The cage is also made out of plastic. But from a manufacturing efficiency standpoint, these end caps are identical, so that reduced costs there too. And yeah, Walmart does not operate on large margins. And that's just how they work. So I think if you add all those things together, that's how you get this quality for three bucks. Now, again, let me say that I'm impressed with the quality at the price point. A lot of you <laughs> really respect you know, the big names like Mobile One and Amsoil, and yeah, I understand that, but for the price, it's pretty compelling. So that's really up to you. Anyway, that's all I had on this guy. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see me look at another filter from another brand, please let me know in the comments. Also, if I skip something in this video, please let me know there as well, and I will try to cover it next time around. And thank you so much for watching.